Hello and welcome to another Jet from Builder tutorial. My name is Andrew and in this video I will show you how to create a multi-task form with a progress bar and briefly discuss a conditional block and advanced validation. As always hit the like button if you find this content helpful and subscribe to the channel to stay updated on new features from Crocoblock. Everything we discuss in this video can be done with just the free Jetform Builder plugin without needing any additional plugins or add-ons. Before we start creating the form, let's go to the Jetform Builder settings and in the options section explore the form accessibility toggles. Let's use the disable next option to prevent users from skipping form pages if required fields are not filled in. Enable the scroll toggle to start at the top of the form after switching between steps and automatic focus to focus on invalid fields after attempting to proceed to the next page in case they are outside of the visible area. Now let's create the form by clicking the add new button in the Jet Form Builder dashboard. I will build a form from scratch, so I don't need to use offered templates and will delete the default fields. In the form settings of the JetForm dashboard, it's necessary to enable the form pages progress toggle. This option adds a progress bar to the top of the multi-step form, displaying a horizontal list of the form pages and indicating which page the user is currently on. The bar is not visible in the form builder editor, but will be seen once we insert the form on a page. Now let's proceed to create form fields and use form page blocks to group the fields. For this example, I will create a form for signing up for a social networking platform account and split the fields into groups for personal information, profile details and login credentials. I will start by creating a part of the form that will be visible on every page. This will include a required email field and a paragraph explaining the significance of filling in this field. Such a feature can be used in processes where the email address serves as a unique identifier or in lead generation forms. Next, I will insert a form page start block. Its role is to create a starting point for the first form page. Following this block, I'll insert four form fields for personal information about the user. The first two fields for first and last names will be required. This means the form cannot be submitted without filling them in and the user will not be able to proceed to the next form page without completing them as was set by the Disable Next toggle in the JetForm Builder settings. The next two fields, a date field for the user's date of birth and a select field for country of residence are not mandatory. To quickly create the country selector block, I used the bulk option feature, which includes a list of countries, allowing me to add all country options with a few clicks. To mark the end of the first portion of form fields, I add a form page break block. It has several important settings. In the button settings section, there are toggles for enabling next and previous buttons and modifying their labels. These buttons will be visible as part of the first form page. Since there can't be a previous page button for the first page, I only enable the next button with a specific label. The page settings allow inserting the label of progress, a text visible in the progress bar denoting the relevant page. I will set this label to be personal information. Finally, the validation message allows inputting text that is visible when the button for proceeding to the next page is disabled due to incomplete required fields. Here I insert a message asking users to fill in the first and last name fields. Now I can proceed to building the second form step with fields that require profile information. Here I want to add two radio button fields one for choosing between a business or personal profile option and another for creating a regular or premium account. I will make both fields required.
Additionally, I want to create a feature that displays a warning to users who choose to create a business account that is not premium, informing them that they will miss out on some features. For this functionality, I will create a conditional block and insert a message that will be shown to such users. To add the event that triggers the display of this message, I'll go to the conditional block settings and in the conditions section I'll click the add new button. Here I choose the show if function and select the necessary conditions, the field label, the equal operator and the triggering value. In my case the conditional field will be activated if there are specific values in two fields, so I add one more condition and repeat the procedure. If I wanted to set either of these conditions to trigger on their own, I would insert an OR operator between them. I will position the two radio fields in a two-column layout and add a title for this field subsection. Next, I will add one more field, a text area field which is not required, where users can insert information about their personal interests. This information can be used by the platform, for example, for personalized advertising. This form page is ready for another form page break block. This time I'll enable both next and previous buttons, type profile information as the progress label and add a validation message stating that a user must choose an account type to proceed to the next form step. For the last form step, I'm adding three text fields for creating a username and password and password confirmation. For the confirm password field, we can use the built-in validation functionality to check whether this field matches the previous one. To do this, search for validation options in the block settings, select advanced validation type and create an advanced validation rule. In the pop-up window, select the equals rule type and choose the password field to check for matching content. Finally, insert the error message that will be displayed if the password and confirm password fields don't match. We're almost ready to insert the last form page break. However, this time, if we want this form page to contain a previous button, we have to insert it with a previous page block, as inserting it using a form page break won't work. Also, ensure there's an action block for a submit button before the final page break. After I add the form step label and the validation message in the form page break field, the form is ready to be saved and published. Now let's insert the form on the page where I already created a title text and a simple three column layout to have control over the form width. I will also use Jet Style Manager at this point to modify some of the form's designs, such as changing the field's background color, modifying the next and previous button styles to distinguish them from the submit button and modifying how validation messages look. Let's click update and proceed to checking the form on the front end. Our form starts with the progress bar, which consists of three numbered nodes with page labels below them. Depending on which page we are currently on, the node and label are highlighted with distinguishable colors. The progress bar colors, typography and other stylistic settings can be modified with Jet Style Manager. Next comes the portion that will be visible during all steps, the email field and the corresponding text. After the point where we inserted the page start block comes the part that is different for every form page, limited by the form page block at the end of each page. The first page labeled personal information requires first and last name insertion. Until then the validation message is visible above the next button and the button itself is not clickable. After the required fields are completed, the validation message disappears and the button changes style when hovered over, according to the style settings I used previously. On the next form page, we have the required fields for selecting the profile type we want to create. We know the fields are required because of the asterisk symbol, 
and the validation message. If we select a specific combination of answers for these fields, we'll see a message from the conditional block, stating that free business accounts have limited functionality. On the final page, we have to fill in the login information fields. The password and confirm password fields have to match according to the advanced validation rule added previously. Otherwise, the last field is not validated, preventing form submission, or if it wasn't the last form page, preventing proceeding to the next page. Besides, we cannot submit the form because we haven't filled in the required email field at the top. Since it is outside of the form fields defined by the form page start and break blocks, we could navigate between the pages without filling this field, but to submit the form we have to fill it. That's everything I had to show you about creating multi-step forms with JetForm Builder, a simple but effective way to group fields and make long forms less intimidating for users. Thank you for watching the video. Support our team by subscribing to our channel, liking and commenting to our videos. All the best and see you next time.